Hi everyone. In this video, I am continuing the measurement of pressure. In the previous two videos, I have explained the types of pressure measurement and uh, uh, first two uh, first two types of pressure measurements I have explained in the second video. Now coming to the third type of pressure measurement, which is known as the reluctance pressure transducer. Reluctance pressure transducer. So, reluctance pressure transducers are of again several types. So, in those we are discussing here two types linear variable differential transformer and second one is servo pressure transducer. So, advantages of this reluctance pressure transducer before going to that reluctance pressure transducer, what do you mean by this uh, uh, reluctance pressure transducer? So, reluctance we are what we are calculating again it comes under the Inductance. Inductance is having some resistance inside it that is known as reluctance. So, linear variable differential transformer. Already we have studied this one in the LVDT topic linear variable differential transformer or linear variable differential transducer. What we have done there? What we have done? I will explain briefly here. So, input voltage input we have applied to a primary coil and two secondary coils are there which have contact like this okay this is the secondary coil one and this is secondary coil two and this is primary winding one in between these two one soft iron core has been inserted with a shaft okay when what happens when this shaft iron core has been gone inside and when we are applying complete pressure on this one here when we are applying complete pressure like a p1 simply what happens it completely goes inside then the core comes nearer to the what is this core the core comes nearer to the secondary winding too or we can say that it it comes in between the primary winding and secondary winding too so because of this type of core measurement the secondary winding 2 will have a lot of emf emf is generated in secondary winding 2 because the core comes in between the primary winding and the secondary winding 2 suppose if the pressure is applied in the reverse direction then when it goes upward direction and the core comes in between the primary winding and secondary winding 1 the, then the emf is developed in s1 okay that means depending upon the direction of applied pressure the resultant emf has been developed in either s1 or s2 okay so if we are having the output voltage in between these two output voltage we are taking v out as the difference between v1 minus v2 the developed emf in first winding minus the developed emf in second winding so one time v1 may be high and one time v2 may be high depending upon the movement of this soft iron core this is what the movement of the iron core decides the output voltage so here whenever we are applying some pressure on this iron core the v1 will vary or v2 will vary so this is what the linear variable differential transformer or transducer working servo pressure transducers where some servo mechanism like rotational mechanism has been used whenever we are applying some pressure the rotation of the needle will be taking place and the corresponding pressure can be calculated so these two are different measurements in the using the measure using the um, what is that um, inductive pressure measurements so coming to the advantages and disadvantages of this reluctance pressure transducer so advantages are it possesses a high sensitivity very rugged in construction and has infinite resolution so it is having highest sensitivity even the, for the small changes in the input voltage for the small pressures also it gives a large value in the output that means uh, small pressures small pressure will give maximum variation in the inductance so very dark green construction and has infinite resolution it shows a low hysteresis tolerate high degree of shock vibration and stable so these are the advantages what we have seen observed in the reluctance pressure transducer coming to disadvantages they are sensitive to stay magnetic fields but shield is possible 
so whenever we are dealing with inductance where well, which with which device we are dealing with here inductance so whenever we are dealing with inductance some magnetic field will be there around it definitely so they are sensitive to magnetic field some other external field magnetic field is also has influence on this particular uh, inductance because the entire induct entire uh, reluctance for the transducer works with the inductive transducer so uh, in order to protect that shielding must be required so whatever the device we have with us that should be protected by a shielding to avoid the magnetic field effects so temperature effects and perform uh, the performance of of transducer so temperature affects the performance of transducer <coughs> so if a little change in the temperature may occur at a room temperature of course it is working properly but if we go beyond the room temperature or extreme ends of the uh, temperatures then it goes the performance of the transducer may affect it will not work properly okay so that is also another part we need to another point we need to take care of it should be working at the room temperature or ambient temperature so another type of another important method like uh, pressure measure one of the important measure method in the um, pressure measurements so that is a piezo electric transducer which i have already explained in the previous videos one of the previous videos so piezo electric transducer by seeing the name itself we can understand that uh, uh, force summing element is there we are applying some uh, pressure on that force summing element which compresses the crystal the resultant output voltage will be varied this is what the piezo electric effect uh, explains us so here this is the construction how the piezo electric uh, uh, transducer has been made uh, see here this is the capacitor which is connected here and these these are the four summing elements these two are force summing elements well right here force summing element force summing element this also force summing element so what we are doing now when we are applying the pressure sensing diaphragm so pressure sensing diaphragm is nothing but force sensing element when we are applying some pressure in this particular direction what happens what happens the force summing element will take this particular pressure and compresses the crystal compresses the crystal we know about the crystal crystal is nothing but it's a quartz crystal whenever it is being compressed the output voltage will vary so here we are taking the output voltage v out this will be affected when it is compressed when it is again released again it goes to normal position the output voltage comes into normal voltage so the change in this output voltage is because of the application of pressure here okay so piezoelectric transducers can measure pressure in the same way a force or an acceleration can be measured for low pressure measurement possible vibration of the amount should be compensated for so for low pressure measurement possible vibration of the amount should be compensated here whenever we are measuring the low pressure it is just simply giving the output voltage that corresponding to the pressure that has been applied the pressure making quartz disc stack faces the pressure through a diaphragm and on the other side of this stack the compensating mass followed by a compensatory quartz so here we are using the blue color the blue color line in the crystal which shows the crystal that is nothing but quartz crystal that quartz crystal is placed on a base okay it is a strong base where whenever we are applying the pressure it is having a compression on this crystal itself okay so when this crystal is being compressed because of this diaphragm again the output voltage will be varied so coming to the advantages and disadvantages of this piezoelectric pressure transducer advantages the transducers no need external power these type of transducers do not need external power supply because these are active type of transducers you know the basic classification of uh, transducers when i was explaining the classification of uh, transducers there are two types of transducers transducers are classified basically into active transducer 
and passive transducer. So, what do you mean by active and passive transducer? Active transducers do not active transducers do not need external do not need external power supply but passive transducers need external power supply passive transducers are nothing but which are resistance capacitance especially resistance okay they need external power supply but whereas here active type of reservoir measurement uh, it doesn't need any active type of transducer is nothing but rlc uh, sorry, passive type of transducer, nothing but resistive, capacitive, inductive transducers. And the active type transducers is example is nothing but piezoelectric transducer. It doesn't need any external supply. Whenever we are applying some pressure, it simply gives the output voltage. So it has a good frequency response. Disadvantages: these type of transducers cannot measure the static pressure. Output of the transducers is affected by changes in temperature output of transducer is affected in the previous example also in the previous second uh, third type of measurement uh, that type of uh, measurement is also affected by the temperature so, so changes in temperature may affect the preserve measurements coming to the last type of uh, measurement that is capacitive pressure measurement uh, we know it very well see by seeing the diagram we can understand or we can recall what we have discussed in the um, previous videos the term capacitor is defined as the metal plates are separated by a distance d a dielectric, a dielectric medium is placed between the plates when voltage is when voltage or potential difference is applied to them equal and opposite charge getting developed on the plate see what happens simply uh, we know very well c is equal to epsilon a by b epsilon a by d see whenever we are studying about capacitor resistor or inductance uh, you should know the basic formula of those devices then only you can understand why and how it is going to be operated see simply uh, epsilon is c is equal to epsilon a by d epsilon is nothing but a permittivity epsilon r and epsilon not a by d a is nothing but area of the plate and d is nothing but distance between the plates so simply what happens these are these are the two plates and this is the capacitance the distance between these two is d and area is nothing but a if distance varies capacitance varies if a varies capacitance varies so any of these changes affect the performance of the affect the value of the capacitance and however the epsilon is constant okay what is the problem what is the method we are doing here one plate is however fixed plate and one plate is a variable plate here it is fixed plate and it is a mobile or variable plate mobile plate what we are doing the pressure what you are going to calculate that pressure we are applying from this side p1 is nothing but pressure so when we apply pressure from this side if the plate goes inside because it is a mobile plate whenever it is having some external force on it it goes inside and again if it is stretched back again it comes out so because of this what happens the parameter d varies Sometimes it may increase or sometimes it may decrease depending upon the direction of the pressure applied on this. So when the value of D changes, area is not changing, plate is not changing here, plate is common. But the value of D is changing. If D increases, what about the C? C decreases. So if D decreases, what about the C? Increases. So the change in the position of the plate may affect the capacitance value that changes the resultant electrical quantity like uh, resistance, like uh, voltage or current. So this is what the method that has been used for the measurement of uh, uh, pressure using capacitive transducer. So coming to the advantages and disadvantages of this capacitive pressure transducer, advantages, these transducers have high input impedance and require small force for operation very small force because the plate movement is very uh, takes the least amount of uh, pressure just a simple uh, normal force is convenient to just uh, move the plate so that the transducer is coming into action these transducers have good frequency response and less effective less affected by stray magnetic fields because we are not using any inductance so that's why magnetic field problems are quite less 
coming to disadvantages guard rings are necessary so so as to minimize stray electric fields see in the previous case when we have used a magnetic couple nothing but inductive transducer as there it was affected by magnetic field but here we are using capacitor transducer so as the material is capacitor here um, uh, component is capacitor the stray electric fields may affect the result and they require complex circuit arrangement like bridge okay so this is the type of measurement these are the different types of measurement uh, coming under pressure measurement and the performance may be affected by parameters like dust and temperature temperature is always a parameter which affects the measurements of any type of measurement uh, pressure measurements okay so this is about the pressure measurement uh, topic types of pressure measurements thank you